Well, firstly, I welcome the decision of the IFAC to say that the budgetary arithmetic, the budget plan for this year and next year, is fully in compliance with EU rules. The rules are complicated, uh, and now the Commission and IFAC agree that we're fully in compliance. Um, in relation to the comment that we're being profligate in expenditure, I think that if you look at a nominal growth rate for the last two years uh, of 18%, uh, if you look at revenue from taxes and PRSI increased by 15%, uh, increasing expenditure by 4% is very prudent in that context and absolutely wide of the mark to suggest that it was anything like uh, the boom time Fianna Fáil expenditure. If you look at the two years running up to the 2002 election, expenditure increased by a mind-numbing 37%. And if you look at the two years running up to the 2007 election, expenditure increased by 25%. So the context of 37 or 25% boosting expenditure running into an election, 4% expenditure when your taxes are rising by 15% looks prudent and careful. Uh, we are also trying to address issues uh, that have to be addressed across the economy. Um, I think nobody would thank us if we didn't give an easement to health to make sure that our a &E services are working, and that's why during the course of the year I announced an additional 130 million for that, or to restart a summer work scheme, and we announced that obviously in advance of the summer, um, or provide more buses uh, to en enable a growing working population to get back to work. The other funding, though, that uh, of the uh, additional supplementary uh, spending that was announced in October, they say matched pretty much uh, entirely the surge in uh, corporation tax, which was the major uh, source of the unexpected uh, additional uh, tax revenues. And they're questioning whether that's a stable source uh, going into the future, because the spending that goes in becomes permanent, but you're not necessarily guaranteed that corporate tax, which has been quite volatile historically, will, is going to continue at this level, and it's, it's concentrated into as few as 10 big companies paying a third of the tax. Well, two things. Uh, firstly, a lot of the expenditure is not embedded in, in expenditure. Buying buses, for example, the allocation we made on the capital side, or the summer work scheme, um, they're not um, part of fixed expenditure. And in terms of revenue being volatile, I think the authoritative voice on that is actually the revenue commissioners. They're the people who know. And in writing, the chairman of the revenue commissioners have said that the bulk of the additional tax revenue uh, that we've enjoyed for 2015 uh, is durable, will be sustained, and will be repeated. Uh, and I think the authoritative voice of the chairman of the revenue commissioners is the one that really counts in these matters. Um, what about the final uh, major criticism that they had, which was the uh, projections forward on the fiscal space and the uh, calculations which they say don't take enough account of demographic factors and indexation and that there actually won't be enough fiscal space to pay for things like tax cuts or discretionary spending rises? It will all be gone for the next government. Well, we've, uh, we've said in the projections we've gone beyond 2016. Uh, we have embedded the pay uh, deal that we've already agreed. We have um, profiled demographics and we put 400 million euros to deal with demographic pressures in um, social welfare, in health and in education. And we've also profiled the committed capital expenditure. Now, we have unallocated fiscal space beyond that because it wouldn't be right uh, for a government that's facing a general election uh, to determine um, how that fiscal space should be allocated. That's a political decision to be determined by the government that has the support of the people after the next general election.